I also spoke with Representative Tavia Golonsky, Assistant Minority Whip in the House. Ohio has been a solidly red state in elections going back over almost a decade. Republicans have swept the statewide offices since 2010. There are Republican supermajorities in the Ohio House, as you know, and in the Senate. They passed legislation on abortion that was signed by Republican governors. And DeWine won all but three counties when he was reelected last year. So how did issue one pass? Well, it's pretty simple. The voters so they've been watching the lawlessness. They've been watching the direction our state is taking and they, they don't like it. And specifically, let's remember all those elections were won in basically very gerrymandered areas where people have uh, had their representatives pick them versus the other way around. So, you, you know, I think Ohio on a certain level um, is red. I know it's red, but red too, too red, gone too far is really what I think the voters said uh, related to issue one is that, you know, we want our freedoms and we want our liberties and, you know, you've really gone too far. As, as soon as Dobbs was, was you know, came into effect, um, there was an awakening that happened across the land. I watched it in my own district. People that, who said to me, you know, I've always voted Republican and I'm, you know, or either I'm an independent, but this is too much and I don't, I don't want this for our state. And so, you know, they, they got a, pr a preliminary uh, view of all of this in August with that, you know, that extremist power grab. And so they were primed and ready to vote as they did in November. You are in Democratic leadership, but you are also a lawyer. So I want to ask you about a draft proposal from Republican Representative Jennifer Gross that will not go forward, according to Speaker Jason Stevens. It said that state lawmakers would have had exclusive authority over implementing Issue 1 with all jurisdiction withdrawn from local and state courts, and it would order the immediate dismissal of lawsuits and violations by judges would be impeachable offenses. There are those who opposed Issue 1 who wanted to see this happen. What are your thoughts as both a lawyer and a Democrat, somebody who can't campaigned on abortion and reproductive rights and access? Well, I'm not surprised. I, I believe that the extremists are in charge here in Ohio as far as the legislature. So I believe them when they tell us what they're going to do. Now, I know that, you know, the speaker has said that's not going anywhere. You know, uh, um, President Matt Huffman suggests that, you know, n none of this will be done. But I don't believe it. We still, you know, there's plenty of time for them to do it, uh, to try to pass extremist measures. The problem with the legislation, there are so many problems with the proposal. But the biggest problem is it seems to have a, a serious lack of understanding of how any of this works works. Um, frankly, a constitutional amendment and, you know, a self-executing statute like issue one, excuse me, like an amendment like section, section article one, section 22 uh, for reproductive freedom can only be overturned by another ballot measure that does the same thing. So the attempt to grab at the judiciary, an attempt to actually silence the judiciary and try to make this just the purview of the legislature really you're just begging for more lawsuits and more insanity. It, 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 it isn't how this works. Would this have stood up to any sort of legal challenges if it had been proposed and passed? No, because we don't have a tyrannical government. We, we, we simply, the legislature cannot do this. Um, you know, LSC is on solid fo footing when they talk about the only way to change what's happened to a constitution, which has just been enacted by the voters, effective December 7th, is through a constitutional amendment. Um, and, and you know, I think that might be attempted, another ballot initiative, something, something like that. But, you know, I think it's going nowhere because, um, you know, Ohio families, voters are tired of these power grabs. They're really tired of the extremism. Democrats have said they're proposing a package of bills that they say are unconstitutional, to, to address laws that they say are unconstitutional, yes. such as the 24-hour waiting period, the targeted regulation of abortion providers or trap laws. An example of one of those would be uh, the requirement of a transfer agreement between an abortion right. provider and a hospital, and uh, measures to protect patient and provider prior privacy. There's nothing in this package that would deal with parental consent. I'm wondering, though, it's been been a little while, a week and a half or so. Where is this legislation? Why has it not been proposed? And if once it is, do you think it has a realistic chance of passing? Second question, no. <laughs> because again, who, you know, who's running the ship? Instead of listening to voters and implementing good laws, which I think that package would be a, an excellent set of 
of laws. Instead of doing that, um, my Republican colleagues are worried about other things that I don't think matter. So I don't think it has an, an opportunity. But what it says to the voters, a package like that that I know is in the works and that I've actually asked to sign on to, uh, is that we hear you. We heard you when you, you, you know, when you passed issue one in November. We heard you in August. And we know that we need to clean up our statutes to make, a, you know, reproductive freedom a real thing. And so that's what we would be doing. We work for the people and we would be sh we're showing that by by uh, offering this legislation, um, which would be what people would want. They want clarity in the law. And these, this set of pack, this package would um, bring clarity to, you know, to what's current to current law. And if, in the absence of a package like this, what happens then? What's the practical application of issue one on Ohioans? I mean, will there have to be lawsuits to decide on the constitutionality of some of these pieces of legislation? Well, practically, so a person wants to exercise their reproductive freedom December 7th forward. Uh, in Ohio, they can feel free to do that. Uh, the decisions between themselves and their providers, um, their family decisions, are, are brought back to women and, and people who could become pregnant, and that's what it should be. Now, do I anticipate there will be lawsuits? Yes, because there will be extremists who try to restrict that freedom, but I, you, how do you get around it? You don't really get around it. What I get concerned about is we've already seen that our, my Republican colleagues don't really care about the Constitution of Ohio, meaning all the times they ignored the, the unconstitutional uh, deci decisions handed down from the Supreme Supreme Court. To me, that's disappointing. I believe voters should be paying close attention to what might be done. We have to remain vigilant, and they need to remain on the balls of their feet, from a basketball analogy, and ready for anything that comes at them. So there could be extremist things that come, you know, to follow, and I think our voters need to remain, you know, uh, remain vigilant. Going forward in the legislature, uh, obviously on election night, we heard from Matt Huffman, the Senate mm -hmm. President, and Speaker Jason Stevens mm -hmm. saying that they were opposed to the passage of issue one. There were 27 members of the Ohio House Republican Caucus who call themselves the Pro-Life Caucus mm -hmm. who said they're going to oppose any sort of implementation mm -hmm. of issue one that goes beyond what they think is appropriate. So when I, I, does issue one change anything when it comes to legislation that will be proposed in the Ohio House and Senate, do you think? It doesn't stop the extremists from being extreme, and it doesn't stop them from proposing things that are against the will of the voters. We've seen that happen. I expect them to do it, but actually, fundamentally, it's a constitutional right to have reproductive freedom in Ohio effective December 7th. And, you know, the, the voters have spoken. The only people who seem to be unaware of how any of this works is the extremists who continue to propose these things. There are laws that I don't like, but I don't walk around talking about how to, uh, you know, just flout those laws or how to break them. And so I don't, I don't, and I don't understand it. It seems misguided. There's a lot of other work to be doing in Ohio, and I wish my colleagues would focus on that. We've got some bipartisan pieces of legislation that are out there that I think are good ideas for Ohioans, but the voters have spoken. They, the Ohio families want reproductive freedom and they support liberty. Do you expect to see this on the ballot again anytime, not anytime soon, but anytime? I do. I mean, I you've got to believe them when they say, you know, again, the extremists in the Republican Party are bound and determined that they want their beliefs to be implemented and, and placed on all Ohioans. They've really 10 years, ever since I got to the legislature six years ago, you know, I've watched them, you know, try to implement laws that are not that are not popular and that don't have the consensus vote of the will of the of Ohioans. And sometimes they've gotten away with it and, and they, they seem determined to do it. Uh, nothing would surprise me. I think this is going to be uh, held around their necks for the elections next year. And, you know, the only person I see running for Senate who cares about reproductive freedom is Sherrod Brown. And so with that in mind, and, you know, I, I expect them to, you know, they're not going to fare well in the elections. That's what I predict.